Since in this series, this is part three, I thought what a wonderful time for some poetry. What is our subject of the week? Of terms related to lenses, we shall speak. In part one of index, we have already spoken. In part two on Abbey, it was light that was broken. Today, with our usual formality, we will jump right in to specific gravity. A term complex and quite confusing, it lends itself easy to misusing. So let's dig in and see if we can find the best way for an optician that it can be defined. And if it helps you in any way, be sure to tell others you learned it from that guy from Laramie K. Hello, I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we have part three in our three-part series on terms related to lens materials. And you may have noticed I am not in my usual attire today. It is rather chilly out here in the studio. So let's just hop on over to the whiteboard and get going. Before we jump into specific gravity and the lens materials, Let's talk about its broader application, and that really will help when we switch gears to our next whiteboard. For our purposes, because it's not always done this way, we say that specific gravity is the relationship between the density of a specific amount of a given material when compared to the density of a specific amount of water. We are not solving for anything. We are simply rewriting the relationship between two things. Are you starting to see a pattern here? We have three terms that are commonly associated with lenses and lens material. Index of refraction. How does the speed of light in air or vacuum compare to the speed of light in a given material? V or Abbey, how does the index of refraction of one specific wavelength compare to that of two others? Specific gravity, how does the density of one material compare to the density of water? That's all we're doing here. In the real world, specific gravity is most commonly used for measuring the density of liquids and gases, not so much solids. And water is not always the thing being compared to. It's often oils and alcohols. This is used in brewing and other scientific applications. It is easiest to picture or see how we end up with a result like this when we think big, when we upscale it. If we think about steel, now you've all picked up a plate at the gym or a barbell somewhere along your life, and you know steel is really, really heavy, right? If I have a one meter by one meter by one meter cube, roughly three feet by three feet by three feet, of solid steel, this is, I literally could hop up and sit on this thing, it would have the density of 8,050 kilograms per cubic meter or 17,747 pounds. If I took the volume of a cube of one meter of water, it weighs 1,000 kilograms. The specific gravity for steel is 8.05. Or we can say that steel is eight times denser than water is. That's how it breaks down. And last, there are no units assigned to specific gravity. We are comparing apples to apples, kilograms per cubic meter to kilograms per cubic meter in this case. 
We're going to do some kind of old-fashioned fraction reduction thing. And when we wipe the whiteboard clean and move on, we start looking at lenses because they're so lightweight, we're going to take it down to grams per cubic centimeter compared to the grams per cubic centimeter of water. Now, the other thing you're going to see as soon as you dig into specific gravity at all, Googling stuff online, other books, it's going to show you the beaker. And the beaker is going to be filled with water, supposedly distilled water at 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which is its densest possible condition. And it's going to say that anything that's put on top of the water and it floats is going to be a specific gravity of less than 1, 0 0.99, 0 0.7, 0 0.4. If it is greater than one, it is going to sink down into the water. What also floats in water? Right. Apples. Uh, very small rocks. So, you know, if you want to dig into that some more, you know, go ahead and Google it. You don't need me to re, um, revisit that. You may remember in one of the very first videos that we ever did, we had the high prescription wheel of terror. Remember that? Don't you dare touch me! Stand no! That was a good one, wasn't it? I ended up getting caught in my own index weight, density, gravity, volume, mass, wheel of terror here. All of these terms are so closely related that it becomes so easy to get confused, get off track, and start thinking about them in ways that we shouldn't. So I've narrowed this down to two concepts that they're related to each other that I want you to take away from specific gravity. Now I said we were going to reduce a fraction. We went from kilograms to grams, from cubic meters to cubic centimeters. We're comparing the two together. We can cancel that out. We've already reduced our fraction to one if we were working the relationship 1.46 divided by one is 1.46. We've reduced that as far as we can go. We don't need that anymore. What is the specific gravity of 1.74 is simply 1.46. From there, we simply have a chart of the seven common materials that we use for lenses. There is the specific gravity, there is the index. Now, what can we take away? Why do lens manufacturers put a specific gravity on their lens spec sheets? All that we can take away from this is that it is of a specific amount of a material. Here's my cubic centimeter. All I can take away from these numbers is that a cubic centimeter of Trivex weighs less than a cubic centimeter of poly. Poly less than 160, CR39 less than 167, down the line. Concept number one is that a lens, a lens, is not a beautiful, perfect cubic centimeter. It will vary, obviously, as you know, by its index of material, of its power requirements, and its size. So you cannot make generalizations. You cannot toss around terms saying that there's any relationship between these numbers and the particular weight or density or specific gravity of a lens. You're only talking about material in this specific amount. The other concept that I want you to take away from this when talking about specific gravity <laughs> is that I guarantee you 100% that if you walked into the mall this weekend and you went into one of those really busy, big optical places where there are five opticians and five frame stylists, and if you hung around for a little while and listened, you'd hear somebody say, Oh, Mrs. Smith, we're going to take you from poly and we're going to put you in a 160, which is going to be thinner and lighter. Discover our thinner, lighter lenses. Not necessarily. Just go back to concept one. The higher the specific gravity of that Griven material by volume, the heavier it is going to be. 
Yes, a 174 is going to be most likely thinner than a poly, but it is not going to be lighter. So stop making that mistake. Again, don't talk about things that are not actually related to one another. All you can tell from specific gravity is how much a particular amount weighs. In other words, would I rather carry 10 blocks of Trivex up the hill, or would I rather carry 10 blocks of 174? And why did I bother to put the index of refraction up there? Well, as a reminder from our first lesson in this three-part series, that specific gravity is about density, but density has little to do with index of refraction, although we sure do like to think about it that way. Remember our Trivex, not very dense index of refraction of 1.53, glass extremely dense index of refraction, a 152. So keep that in the back of your mind as well. What does it all come down to? Well, surprise, surprise, it all comes down to you. You matter. As power goes up, we do need to think about the index of refraction. We need to think about the Abbey. We need to sort of think about specific gravity. We need to think about power, frame size, frame shape, how to get great measurements, all that good optician stuff that we cover on the Optician Works website. Thank you. I think we can put specific gravity behind us now. If you are watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. If you're watching us on Facebook, please give us a like. Make sure that every lens, regardless of its specific gravity, comes from Laramie K. And I will see you again next week. Pie Jesu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem.